What's up everybody, welcome to System Crafters. I'm David Wilson and today we're gonna to talk about a package that will help you to manage your list of buffers more effectively called perspective.el. So there's a question that I see pretty often in the System Crafters Discord and other places online where people discuss Emacs and Emacs configuration. And that is, how do I get a buffer list for only the files or buffers that I want to see? So in Emacs, Running uh, switch to buffer or iBuffer is going to show you every single buffer that's currently open in Emacs, which can be a little bit overwhelming in long running Emacs sessions. So let's say you've had Emacs open for maybe a few days, a couple weeks, months, who knows how long, and you've been working on uh, various different projects and you've got buffers for files and all those projects open. And you've got, uh, let's say, eShell open or maybe a, a few instances of eShell or vterm. And then you've got a bunch of DRED buffers open, a bunch of org files open. Uh, it gets a little bit overwhelming whenever you try to look at your buffer list to find buffers that you're, you're interested in seeing. Now, obviously, if you're using a completion framework and you can fuzzy find against all the file names you have open, that helps a little bit. But sometimes you just want to see only the files that are related to something that you're working on at this moment. So uh, the perspective.el package provides a convenient way to define individual perspectives for managing separate sets of buffers in Windows. Uh, you can think of perspectives like the workspace concept that you see in some window managers. So if you've used a, uh, well, many Linux window managers have a concept of workspaces where you have uh, individual, uh, we could call them screens, something like that, uh, where you have different window configurations. So maybe you have, you know, three windows on the first workspace and five windows on the second workspace. And all of them have their own set of windows. So a perspective in perspective.el gives you a similar concept where you can have window configurations. You have your windows split a certain way and uh, each perspective has their own set of window splits. However, it can also have its own set of buffers. So if you wanna have individual perspectives with different lists of buffers, you can also do that with perspective.el. And I think that's sort of like the biggest benefit of using that package. Um, so there are other alternatives to this package that have a different take on this workspace concept and we may cover those in future videos, but I'm covering perspective.el today because I've been using it for a while and I like it quite a lot. So the benefits of perspective.el, uh, like I mentioned before, each perspective keeps its own buffer and buffer list and window layout. So each of those things are independent. You can create multiple perspectives and each of them will have its own set of windows and buffers. Uh, also, perspectives are attached to specific frames. So if you uh, use only a single frame in Emacs, which is basically the, uh, the desktop level window of Emacs, um, then you have multiple workspaces inside that single frame. However, if you'd like to use multiple Emacs frames in your Emacs session, then each of those frames is gonna have its own set of perspectives. And that can be pretty nice whenever you have different frames that are dedicated to different purposes, and then each of those frames can have its own set of basically sub workspaces where uh, you can uh, separate things even further. And also it works pretty seamlessly with EXWM if you use that, uh, since EXWM sets up each of its desktop workspaces as individual Emacs frames, then like I said before, each frame has its own set of, of uh, perspective.el perspectives. So um, you can have a, uh, a major workspace frame for each EXWM workspace, and then each of those will have its own set of perspectives, which are basically like sub workspaces. And uh, you can do some really cool things with that. Um, also, uh, it provides functionality for saving perspectives to use in future sessions. So if you like the way that you have your windows laid out, you like these set of perspectives that you have open, you can easily save those to a file to be reloaded in the future. So when you load Emacs back up, you can load those perspectives back in and have all your windows and buffers back to, to the way they were before. Uh, it can be pretty helpful if you're doing long-term work on projects. And lastly, you can write Emacs Lisp code to automate perspective creation and also interacting with perspectives, renaming them, adding buffers to them, et cetera. Uh, if you want to have a lot of control over how your desktop environment or your Emacs session gets set up whenever you launch it, uh, you can use perspective, uh, the, the functions that come with perspective.el to, to automate the whole flow, which is something that I do in my desktop environment setup. And we'll talk about that in another video. We won't go into that today, but it is something that you can do and I wanted to make you aware of it. So um, I've been using perspective.el for a few months now and it's become a very important part of my workflow. So hopefully you will um, try it out and see whether it works for you.
All right, so if you use uh, use package with package.el, which is probably pretty common, uh, you can copy the following Emacs Lisp snippet into your init.el file and then execute it for the first time with control alt X or with control X, control E, however you tend to, to execute things. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is take this code and drop it into a basic Emacs configuration. As you can see here, there's not much going on, just you know, kind of a plain setup. I'm gonna paste this in and then I will execute it. I'll just put my cursor inside of the use package and use control alt X. And now that will, uh, if you haven't already installed perspective, the ensure T here will make sure that that gets installed and then it will set up uh, persp mode immediately. Also, if you're using straight.el, make sure to uh, replace that ensure T with straight T as it says here, uh, just to make sure that straight is the one that installs a package instead of package.el. Uh, we also have a binding here that I'll explain a little bit later, but don't worry too much about that right now. Uh, just, you know, see that basically there's not much configuration needed to get this working. Um, so one thing I wanted to, to mention is that uh, there are some default key bindings that get bound by perspective.eo whenever you install and load it. And if you want, to, uh, the, the default prefix is uh, control X X, which is uh, I guess fairly convenient, but if you want something that's a little bit more convenient or fits into your workflow better, you can actually use the persp mode prefix key variable to change what that uh, early prefix is. You can change it from control X X to anything else that you like. So I just wanted to make that uh, make you aware of that in case you like the binding setup that it uses and you just want to change the prefix. All right, so uh, now let's try out uh, perspective.el and see what we can learn about it. All right, so by default, perspective.el is going to create a perspective called main in every frame that Emacs creates. Uh, in the very first frame that Emacs creates whenever you start it up, uh, all of Emacs starting buffers will be inside of that main perspective in that frame. So there's usually the messages buffer, a scratch buffer, maybe a warnings buffer if you had any kind of errors or warnings during your init process. Uh, all of those will be put into that uh, main perspective. Uh, but keep in mind that because you can create more frames whenever Emacs is loaded. Each of those frames is going to get a perspective called main, but they're not the same main perspective. Each each set of each frame has its own set of perspectives, and those perspectives can have the same name across uh, multiple frames, but they don't. This doesn't mean they're the same one. And we can see that in a little bit. I'll show you what that means. Um, so basically, whenever you uh, start up Emacs and you're in this main perspective by default. Uh, you can open any buffer you want inside of it and it will be made a part of that perspective. And it basically gets attached to that perspective and then anytime you have a different perspective, they'll have its their own set of buffers. So just keep in mind this main perspective is like the default and it catches all the buffers that uh, get created whenever Emacs starts up. Uh, let's see, they had a little tip there. So uh, the name of the default perspective, if you don't like the fact that it's like a lowercase word of main, if you want it to be called something else, uh, you can change that with a variable called persp initial frame name. So just set that variable before you start persp mode and uh, that will be used for creating the initial perspective uh, for each frame. All right, so to list all the buffers in the perspective, uh, you can use the normal switch to buffer command. And this will work just fine with uh, Emacs built-in completion systems and Helm and Vertico. So um, there has been some work done inside of perspective.el to put hooks into things like I do or Helm uh, to make sure that they work correctly since those completion systems are a little have a little bit more customization than other things that are built into Emacs like iComplete. So, um, uh, one, another thing is, that's interesting here is that Vertico actually works really well with this because Vertico integrates very cleanly into the built-in completion engine inside of Emacs. So if you use Vertico, you basically just turn on perspective mode and everything works just how you would expect it to. You, you use uh, switch to buffer, it will show you only the list of buffers inside of the current perspective and you're good to go. Um, so let's just take a look at that really quickly before we, we move forward. I'll jump back over to uh, the uh, the current perspective or the the Emacs configuration, and uh, I'm going to use use uh, switch to buffer, and uh, that's Control X B by default. So you can see that we get the list of buffer buffers here. We see the messages buffer, scratch buffer, and there's a straight process buffer. Uh, nothing really looks that special right now because we only have a single main perspective. And like I said before, all those initial buffers just get dropped into that one whenever uh, we start up Emacs. Um, so if you want to use something like Ivy, sometimes you have to do a little bit or use a different uh, buffer listing command because Ivy has its own sort of um, internal logic about how completions work. 
So um, if you use Ivy, you might want to use the persp Ivy switch buffer or persp council switch buffer commands for better integration with Ivy and council. I think the biggest difference between these two is that if you use persp council switch buffer, it will preview the buffers that you're selecting as you go through the buffer list. So if you use council uh, switch buffer, you probably are used to whenever you um, navigate through the list of buffers, it will preview them in the, the main um, window in the frame. So if you want that behavior, definitely use persp council switch buffer. If you use Selectrum, uh, Selectrum is sort of better integrated into the default completion engine, but it has also some of its own behavior that you might need to hook into. Uh, so you might want to use this persp switch to buffer star function, and that star there actually is part of the function name. So if you use that function, that should give you better integration with uh, persp mode in Selectrum than what you would get just using the plain switch to buffer command. Um, then uh, if you prefer to use iBuffer for switching buffers and just doing general buffer management, if you want to use an iBuffer style uh, buffer switcher, uh, you can use persp-ibuffer instead, and that will show you only the buffers that are for that perspective using an iBuffer style interface. Um, you can also choose from all open buffers. Like, so, you know, if, if you want to list all the buffers that are open in Emacs, regardless of what perspective they're on, and then uh, switch to the perspective that owns that buffer, you can use the persp switch to buffer command. Uh, though I'll mention that I haven't really seen this work correctly in the past, so I don't really know if there's like an, an issue with the way that I'm using it, or maybe I just haven't used it in the right context to make that work. But um, that is something you might want to try in case you do want to be able to jump to a perspective that has a specific uh, buffer assigned to it. So, um, so having only one perspective isn't very useful. If you use pers mode or perspective mode, uh, you are probably going to want to have multiple perspectives to make this of any use to you. Uh, so let's create another perspective to try this out. Uh, to do that, you're going to run the persp switch command, which is control X X S. And that's going to prompt you for the name of a perspective to switch to. And if you enter a name of a perspective that doesn't exist yet, it will be created at that point. So if you go over to this window and, and note here on the uh, mode line, you'll see that any um, key bindings that I use get shown here in the mode line. That's, that's from a package called Keycast, which we haven't really covered yet, but just, just so you know. So control X, X, S. And now that runs the persp switch command is asking me for a perspective name. So I'm going to type in system crafters here. And then when I press enter, it's going to create a new uh, perspective called System Crafters, or I guess System Crafter, maybe I typed that wrong. Um, and if we list the buffers using Control XB, which is switch to buffer, you'll see that only a scratch buffer is present. And this is kind of a, the fact that it has a scratch buffer that has System Crafter after it, it's actually a feature of persp mode where each new perspective gets its own scratch buffer, which can kind of be helpful if you want to have like temporary notes you want to store uh, while you're working on a project. Uh, this could be a nice way to, to do that because you have a scratch buffer for every perspective. So we can see here that only the, um, system, the scratch buffer for the System Crafter perspective is visible at the moment. And uh, yeah, so we were using switch to buffer for that uh, functionality. And, and I'm currently using Vertico in this configuration for the completions. So this is why you see uh, the buffer here. And there's also some metadata here because I also have marginalia installed. All right, so switching perspectives. So now that you have multiple perspectives in your in the, the current frame that we're looking at, uh, you can select from a list of all perspectives using that same command we just used, pers persp switch, which is control X, X, S. Uh, it basically just lists all the current perspectives you have in this uh, current frame so you can select between them. So what I'm going to do now is jump back over to that uh, uh, that Emacs window and use Control X X S. And it's going to show me that we have the main perspective and we have the system crafter perspective. So I'm going to sele select main because that's the one we're currently not on. And now we're back on the main perspective. And if I were to do Control X B to get the buffer list again, we'll see now we have that list of uh, messages and scratch buffers. And if I jump back to the other uh, perspective by using Control X X S, whoops, Control X X S, I can go back to System Crafter, and then if I use the buffer listing here, Control X B, then it, I only see that scratch buffer for the System Crafter's uh, uh, perspective. So we can already see that we now have a separate buffer list for these two perspectives, and um, we can continue to open new files in either of those, and those buffers will be attached to whichever perspective that you're currently in whenever you open something. So let's say I wanted to open eShell here. Uh, and now Control-XB, we have eShell inside this uh, this buffer list. And if I jump back over to 
the main perspective. Uh, e shell is not here. Uh, in this one, I could just open up a file. At, let's see, uh, projects code. Uh, emacs from scratch emacs.org and now this emacs.org file is open inside of uh, the main perspective so um, there's other ways to switch perspectives in a more efficient way um, there's a couple of commands you can use to uh, cycle between open perspectives so there's the persp next and persp prev commands which will go forward and backward in the list of perspectives that you have open um, there's a, a couple of key bindings for those. Uh, one is Control X X N for next, and Control X X P for previous. You can also use Control X X and then the left and right arrow keys to then cycle between those as well. So uh, if you look down in the uh, mode line here, you'll see that uh, we have a little indicator that tells us which perspectives are available on the current frame. And if we use Control X X uh in it will switch to the next perspective so let's say i created another perspective control x x s and we'll say a third i don't know we'll just call it something so now we have three perspectives open if i use control x x n it jumps to main if i use control x x n again it jumps back to system crapper so you can basically just cycle between those um, personally, I feel like that key binding is not very convenient because there's too many keys you have to press. So you might want to bind it to another binding that is more convenient for you. Like let's say the super key and um, the square brackets or something like that. So it's something that is a lot easier for you to hit. That way you can easily switch back and forth between the different um, perspectives that you have open. Um, one other way to quickly switch between them is to use the control XX and the number row keys to switch between the numbered uh, ordering of the current perspectives you have open in the frame. So uh, in this example we have here, uh, one would be assigned to the system crafter uh, pr perspective, two would be assigned to third, and three would be assigned to main. So if I was to press control X, X, three, it jumps to main. And if I press control X, X, one, it jumps to system crafter. So if you know the numeric index by looking at the list of uh, perspectives there, you can actually jump to uh, whichever one you want using the, the numeric index instead of uh, cycling through them individually. All right, so um, sometimes you'll end up in this situation, uh, you open a file in a perspective and then you realize that you, you should have opened it into a more appropriate perspective for this particular file. So maybe, you know, you've got, um, you, you're in a perspective that's sort of for general, general use and then you open an org mode file that's related to something, some project you're working on, you're like, oh, I wish I would have opened it in this other perspective instead. So there's a few ways to move that buffer or at least get it into that other perspective if you want to so that it shows up in the buffer list of that perspective. Uh, first of all, there's the persp add buffer command and uh, that's bound to control X, X, A. If you run that, it's going to prompt you for the buffer to add to the current perspective. So whichever perspective you're currently on, that command will take the buffer that you, you select and then put it into the current perspective. Uh, however, it will not switch that buffer automatically. It just brings it into the current perspective's buffer list, and then you can switch to it yourself if you want to. So if we were to go into, uh, let's say, let's go back to the, uh, the main workspace. I'm going to use Control X, X3 to jump to that one. Uh, in this buffer list, Control X, B, we do not see E shell here. But if I were to run, um, let's see, Control X, X, A, that is the uh, persp. Uh, add buffer that we just talked about. If I were to select E shell here, that will bring that E shell buffer into the main uh, perspective. And then if I use Control X B, we can see E shell is now here and I can go to that buffer. Uh, you can also use a command called persp set buffer, which is bound to Control X X capital A. And instead of adding this buffer to the, the current perspective, what it will do is add the buffer to this perspective and then remove it from all other perspectives. So uh, if you really want one buffer to only live in a specific perspective, you should use persp set buffer instead so that it does not show up in any other uh, perspective buffer list. So if we go back to the example session here, uh, if I were to go to the third, um, perspective and we list the buffers here all we see is scratch third i can use uh, control x x capital a and then select e shell here and that's going to bring that into this perspective now it's in this perspective's buffer list i can go to e shell then if i go to uh let's say the main um perspective control x x n to go to the next one 
If I look up the buffer list, there's no E shell here. If I use control X, X, N to go to the system crafter list and look at the buffer list, there's no E shell here either. So that same E shell buffer has been moved to the uh, perspective called third and has been removed from the other perspectives so that it only shows up in that one uh, perspective buffer list. Uh, lastly, and it's probably the one that you're gonna wanna use a lot of the time because it's more convenient, is that whenever you run switch to buffer, what perspective mode has, or what pers perspective.el has done is uh, hooked into switch to buffer so that it only shows the buffer listing for the current perspective, but you can override that by using control U. So um, you, you, you may or may not know about this already, depending on how many videos you watch on this channel, but the control U binding is something special in Emacs. It's called universal argument. And uh, it's usually used to augment the behavior of whatever command or key binding that you'd use next. So in this case, if you press control U before you run switch to buffer, or if you press control U, then control XB, then it's gonna show you a list of all open buffers instead of just the ones in the current perspective. And whatever buffer you select in that list, it's gonna add it to the current perspective. So if you wanna to switch to a buffer that um, belongs to some other perspective and also add it to the current perspective as you do that, uh, you can use uh, control U and then switch the buffer to do that. This also works for the, the other uh, persp commands that you might have to use for uh, IV and Selectrum, et cetera. So uh, this is a pretty general solution for all of these cases. So let me go over to this, this um, uh, example Emacs session, and I'm gonna use control U first. Whoops, let's see, let me quit that up. So control U, so you see here now in KeyCast, it says I use the universal argument, then I'll use control X B. And now we see a list of all buffers, not just the ones for the system crafter uh, perspective. If I were to select uh, let's say E shell. Now it switches immediately to E shell inside this perspective. And now E shell has made a part of uh, this perspective's buffer list. And it basically overrides the fact that we use persp set before, uh, persp set buffer, because you're basically adding that buffer to another perspective now. So um, internally, uh, perspective.el is keeping a list of buffers per each perspective. And it's not like you're, you're saying this perspective owns this buffer. You're basically saying, I'm adding a buffer to this perspective's buffer list. And if you remove them from all others, that's fine. But if you, you then add that buffer to another perspective's buffer list, it will show up in multiple perspectives again. Uh, maybe a little bit confusing, but basically what I'm trying to say is that there's never a case where a single perspective owns a buffer forever. It can always be added to another perspective's buffer list. All right. So removing a buffer from a perspective. If you want to remove a buffer, uh, you can use the persp remove command, which is control X, X, K. And once you select a buffer from the buffer list for the current perspective, it will be removed from that perspective, uh, but only from the, the current perspective. If it's, if it's in other perspectives also, it will stay in those perspectives. So uh, let's see, what is a buffer we have in all? Um, so E shells in this, this perspective, and I think in uh, control X, X, N, we go to the third perspective, it's also here. So if I were to use control X, X, um, K, it's gonna ask me which bu uh, buffer that I wanna remove from this perspective. I can select the E shell. It will automatically switch to another buffer in this perspective because we've removed the one that we were currently in. Now, if I jump back to uh, the system crafter perspective with, with control X, X, P to switch the, the previous one and use control X, B again, we'll see the E shell is still here inside of the system craft perspective, but it's been removed from the third perspective. So it just shows you that you have total control over which buffers show up in which perspective list. You can add them, you can remove them, you can move them around, whatever you want to do. So it's a much more uh, tightly controlled way, I guess you could say, for managing your buffers. Um, and uh, also, if you're done with a particular perspective, you can kill it, uh, sort of Emacs parlance for deleting something or removing something, uh, using the persp kill command, that is control X, X, C, which is a little confusing because control X, X, K is persp remove. So I, I don't know if there was just like a some convention they were following that is a little bit um, not so mnemonically friendly, I guess you could say. But uh, in this case, just keep in mind that control XXC actually is for kill and not the, the control XXK. So uh, the documentation for this says that only buffers associated with the killed perspective and no others will be killed. So basically, if you have a buffer that's only open in the perspective that you're killing, it will kill that buffer. But if, you ha if that buffer is open in multiple perspectives, it will not kill that buffer. 
Um, that actually hasn't been true in my experience whenever I've used persp kill. It seems that whenever you use persp kill, any buffers that are uniquely open in that the perspective you're killing, uh, they still stay open. And they're just not visible in other buffer lists. So I'm not, exa not exactly sure if there's a bug or maybe a misunderstanding on my part, but that's you just keep it in mind what this says in the documentation. You may not actually see that happening in reality. The important thing here is that if you have a list of perspectives here in um, your mode line, maybe there's one you're like, okay, I'm done with that. I don't really want to see it anymore. So you can just use control X, X, C. It will tell you, it will ask you which one you want to delete. I'll say delete the, the third perspective. And now that one's gone. You don't have to see that in your list anymore. Um, so I also mentioned that in a very recent commit to the perspective.el repo, a new command named persp kill others has been added, which is kind of useful if you want to kill every other perspective except for the current the, the one that you're currently in. Um, so that's something that uh, since I installed this using straight.el, uh, or actually I use, I use package.el for this, but um, it's available for me because it's pulling it directly from the Git repository. So uh, persp uh, kill others. So if I were to run that, the main perspective is going to go away now because it's going to kill everything except the, for the perspective I'm currently on. So I'll select this. It's going to ask me if I want to kill all others except it for, from System Crafter. I'll say yes. And then now all other perspectives will be gone. So if you want to clean up your session from all the other perspectives, you can run that command. But keep in mind, this is only available in the latest commits of the repo. So you need to be installing this package from Melpa and not from uh, Melpa Stable or the Geeks Package repo or some other uh, approach. This is a very new function that you'll have to update to get. All right, so that was really just a brief overview of perspective.el uh, to get you started. Uh, hopefully you like it. Uh, let me know in the comments if you uh, try it out, if you have any trouble or maybe you have any questions about it. Uh, in future videos, we're going to cover more ways to customize your perspective workflow and also how to integrate it with uh, other packages like EXWM and Projectile. Um, and also, if you have other ideas for how you would like to see uh, perspective.el used, uh, leave them in the comments and I'll be happy to try to look into that for, uh, for other future videos. And we'll also try to look at some of the other competing packages to this at some point to see how things compare between them. Uh, but for my taste, uh, perspective.el is a really good package and I use it quite a lot, so I highly recommend it. All right, before we go, I'd like to say uh, thank you to my sponsors. Uh, these people have decided to sponsor the work that I'm doing to make videos about GNU Geeks, GNU Emacs, etc. And I'm very thankful to them for their support. If you're interested in becoming a sponsor or a patron for the channel, uh, definitely check out the links below in the description. I'm on both GitHub sponsors and Patreon. Uh, there's also a link to PayPal for one-time tips. And if you're not interested in uh, supporting in that way, definitely just click like on any of the videos or streams that we publish on this channel because it helps people find them. Somehow, somehow it helps with the YouTube algorithm. I don't, don't ask me. I don't know. <laughs> um, and also just share the videos with uh, other people you know who might be interested because the more people we have finding these videos and coming and joining the System Crafters community, the more people we have to talk to about all this cool stuff, which is great. All right, so um, I think that's it for today. So let me know in the comments if you like uh, Perspective.el and uh, we'll talk about some more cool stuff like that in the future. So until next time, thanks a lot for watching. Happy hacking. See ya.